still the shadow is too strong. I'm comparing the shadow with the original shadow that the object has in here. So I'm just going to reduce that one more time. Uh, probably it's still in my history for the focus. Here it is. And I'm just going to give it a tint of red. While we're here, let's adjust the drop off a little bit. Increase the number. Alright, so this is getting much better. I'm not going to spend more time uh, adjusting the shadow or the lights. Uh, I think uh, I've got enough there to explain the idea. You can also add another light that's coming from here to give you more realistic uh, approach for the shadows because you can see shadows as in here as well. But this is what we end up with and this is what we started from. So obviously a huge difference. Um, as you can see there's all other attributes here that adding to the uh, realism which is the ambient occlusion. For this we can have a closer look at the MIP shadow itself and because it has lots of parameters that we need to explore. But before we do that let's save our file when we look at the MIP match shadow, you'll see it has also multiple parameters that help. For example, ambient occlusion is on. If I disable that, you'll see here in the ambient occlusion, which adds a lot of realism to your render. Once I disable that, you will see the object will appear that if it's floating in midair and it doesn't have that contact on the ground. So that's why we have the ambient occlusion on. The ambient occlusion samples, it's pretty much the same thing that we have for the MIP ambient occlusion. And for the distance, when you leave it a value of zero, that will give it automatic detection. Uh, so you can reduce that, let's say, uh, to 10 to tighten up how far the ambient occlusion is going. So you see here, and right underneath the sphere, it was darker before. Now it's a little bit lighter because we controlled how far the distance is going. If you are having a reflective material, so let's say there's a varnish on this bench, and you want this object to be reflective, then you can obviously enable catch reflection. It's going to go down a little bit here. And if I render this, and you'll start seeing now there is a reflection happening here right underneath. It's more obvious with this uh, torus. So the reflection color is a multiplier on the reflections. For example, if I drop it to black, just keep that image here and render again. So you see we pretty much disabled the reflection. So I'm just going to exaggerate in the reflection. I'm going to increase it way high because at this particular point I want to show you that when we increase the reflection samples along with the glossiness we can have blurred reflection so if your surface is somewhat uh, blurring the reflection we can also adjust that from here so I'm just going to render this to show this is the sharp reflection if I increase now the samples let's say to 12 we're going to start seeing blurriness so you see here the edge is starting to blur a little bit and this is a combination of increasing the samples and reducing the glossiness. So if the glossiness is to, let's say it's to 1, back to 1, and the glossiness is to 1, this is going to be very sharp. If you're going to reduce the reflection glossiness a little bit, and you also leave it to reflection samples, the samples is not going to have enough to calculate, give you a nice blur. It's going to be very uh, harsh. You see, it didn't have enough samples to, uh, to blur it, so it was just pretty much like dots floating in the, on the uh, rendered. But if I increase this to 12, this will be a nice reflection blur. So you see here now, it's nice blurred because we have lots of values for the samples and the reflection gloss is very low. So I'm just going to go back to the default here for a sec. So as for the reflection uh, max distance and the uh, reflection falloff, they're the same thing as the MIB closely reflections. So if I bring every back to default, the maximum distance, when we say zero or whenever you have a value of zero, it's automatic detection mentor will determine how far it's going to go. But if you want to max out how far the distance of that reflection, this is the way they control it. So if I put a low value and render this, you'll see it is appearing, but it didn't go far. Okay, so it's right there. So if I go again to uh, maybe uh, two, and then one more time you can start seeing it more visible now. So I'm just going to reduce back to zero to get the default. But the same thing with the fall off. Pretty much uh, calculate how fast that ray will reach to that maximum distance that we predetermined. So uh, it's the same thing as the MIB glossy reflection. So leave that to default too. The catch indirect, that means if I have an object that's here that's being indirect illumination, let's say that we have a card, like let me create a plane. 
like a lighting card and I'm just gonna assign a surface shader give it a very uh, visible color red just put it out of the way here now let's keep this image here for facial comparison and render that you're gonna start seeing it's affecting the color of that plate in here so it might might not be obvious because we have the reflection so I'm just gonna go back and disable that reflection and we have the catch and indirect light so I, I disable the uh, reflection let's render that the first thing you do once you render it you see there's there's nothing it's the color of that red tint here is being captured everywhere except the ground so I'm just gonna keep this image and that's because the indirect lighting is the added here is black so if you multiply it by zero it's gonna give you zero so if I bring this all the way to one render that region again you'll see now here it's very obvious that there's a red tint on that plate so I'm just gonna disable that setting this back to black so let's example uh, render this like so for the multiple outputs on uh, this shader has the ability to output uh, multiple uh, parameters of this uh, calculation which is for example the shadow raw ambient occlusion raw and the reflection indirect and also elimination laws as well so we're not going to be doing that for now so I'm just gonna let this go for the catch elimination uh, you can add the specific lights that you can list in here and that will capture that light that you will add but since we're using default lighting we're not doing any customization here I'm leaving this uh, to be off there is a couple of things that uh, I left in the, at the top we can uh, disable cat shadow so if I do that you'll see here there's no shadow anymore you can customize the color of the shadow from here as well if you wish to uh, so for example to be this color nice. and let's see if I render this again you'll see here it's starting to be very very bright so obviously we need to adjust it down I'd rather to have more control over the shadow from the actual light and this is the ambient of the color itself the self shadow if you have multiple objects that uh, containing uh, this shader and you don't want them to be shadowing on top of each other you can disable that to be have known self shadows if you notice the uh, back of the glass maybe I should put glass on this uh, cylinder I use glass thin and I'm just gonna render this one more time okay so we have the glass here and all right so the glass here is on I just wanted to see it's coming out back and one of the good things that we can do um, is to actually have the object that is ca receiving that shadow if I go back here a little bit and scale it just for uh, the show and let me go to its input node and add more divisions and go to my vertex mode and just select these vertices and move them up so we can have the object actually entirely behind it and just render one more time now if I compare this from the previous render and you'll start seeing there's a difference especially behind the glass in here and in here and that difference is because that object that has the uh, FIB matte shadow on it, it can act also as a blocker so for example if it there is rays coming through and you want to, you want to capture the, what the image is behind the sphere you'll see now we can see more of the brown here more obvious rather than we had before. We still have it a little bit but this is now more accurate if you want to call it that way. It will also as I said it will work as a blocker so if I create a 